Hi everybody, I hope you had a great week. Today I'm going to talk about the 12 steps, the 12 steps to recovery. Uh, maybe many of you have heard of the 12 steps. I used to think that the 12 steps was only used for uh, people that had alcohol problem or a substance use disorder. What I've learned is that the 12 steps also are for the loved ones like myself. I always say that I'm in recovery just the same as Ben is in re his recovery. So 12 steps are used in, in different recovery meetings, whether it's AA, NA, and Narnon, Al-Anon, and so on. And it was founded, it's been going on since the 1930s. I can't remember the year. I think 1935 is when the 12 step program started. And uh, there is a good success rate with the 12 step program. So I'm here to tell you that the 12 steps is not only for the alcoholic and the substance use, the person with a substance use disorder, it's also for the loved one, for their codependency. So I thought I would start with step one and uh, tell you uh, what step one is and how I worked through step one. Step one is we admitted we were powerless and that our lives have become unmanageable. So when you read step one, you could put, we admitted we were powerless over the addict. That would be me because I have my recovery or the person that has the alcohol problem or the drug issue. They would say we would, we admitted we were powerless over the alcohol or the drugs and that their lives have become unmanageable. When did I realize my life had become unmanageable and that I was powerless over what Ben did, has done, and what he is going through? I realized that when Ben was being hospitalized a number of times due to overdoses and I learned what was in his system uh, and I thought, this is bigger than me. And I realized that my mental health depended on what state Ben was in. And, you know, as a mom with our kids, we usually are having good days if our kids are having a good day. And if they're not having a good day, it makes ours a bit more challenging. Well, if your loved one has a substance use disorder, uh, that is magnified. And the thing with that, with the substance use disorder, you are powerless over what they do. Um, when I realized that Ben with the overdoses had a number of drugs in his system and that this was becoming a regular thing, I learned more about addiction and how it affects the brain. And I realized that I had no power over telling Ben what to do and how to help him. And once I learned that, I was able to start helping myself and learning that I am powerless over what Ben does. So my approach is I am there for Ben to support recovery. I have learned through the number of steps, the 12 steps, that it's not healthy for me to enable him. So I've learned how not to enable him. It's important for me to take care of myself. And that's why I'm a huge proponent, a huge uh, advocate for self care. Uh, with the addict, uh, the first step is when they admit that they have a problem and they have no control over uh, the physical part of the addiction or the mental part of the addiction and once they surrender to it and go through the first step uh, then they can continue and go through recovery the thing is it's scary it's scary admitting that you don't have control and with drugs and alcohol there's there's a shame to it and an embarrassment to it um, but it, it takes someone brave to admit that they have a problem so where do we go from here from step one when you realize that you have no control then you find support and like i've said there are a number of links i'll link you up again um, 
there is support for the loved one, there is support for the alcoholic, there is support for the substance use uh, disorder. So step one, admitting that you're powerless and that your lives have become unmanageable. Um, once we get to that point and we admit that, that's when we can start to get help. I wish you all a fantastic week. Just remember where there is breath, there is hope. There is support out there. Um, be safe, be smart, take care of yourself, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.